Now that you've created your Google form and have all of your questions, before you do anything else, this is the time that you can organize your Google form and make some changes if you need to. Um, you're going to be able to make changes going forward if you need to edit or change anything, but um, the order of the questions is going to be set once we move away from this place. So if I wanted to change the order of two of the questions, all I do is just drag and drop the different questions. Okay. So now we have learned that it's important to not have at apps.edina.k12 in the address in the black box at the bottom. But um, the way we're going to access the form and show you what it looks like is by clicking on that link. So I'm going to click on that link and I'm going to show you this is the second version of the form. So this is what this Google form will look like to the end user when you send out the link. You'll notice it does have the at apps.edina.k12 in it. So that means that we clicked on the link and it brought up the at apps. So you do not want to highlight and copy this link right here. You do not want to use that one because it has the at apps.edina. If it has the at apps.edina.k12.mn.us, what it means is that the person is going to have to log into to Edina apps in order to fill out the form. Not everybody that you want to fill out the form is going to have an Edina apps address. If, we, if teachers are sending it to students or parents, um, parents wouldn't have the Edina apps login. So that's just the reason for that. So this is what the Google form looks like um, to the end user. So if I was going to practice and fill this out, I would do my last name and my first name. What were the three best PD activities? One, two, three. I could fill another if I wanted. What's your favorite subject to teach? I only get one right answer with this. So if you see it changes, it only allows me to have one. What school do you work at? I'm at the district office. And how do you feel about the school year? Best year ever. Once I click submit, the user gets this response. Your response has been recorded. So why, where does all the information go? You will notice now that if you go back to your Google Docs, okay, one of the tabs up at the top is probably Google Docs, you'll see that something, a spreadsheet, has been created for you. So you didn't create this. All you did was made the form in that create Google form. But a spreadsheet was made, and if I click on it, it has all of the questions up in the top row and there's a column to collect the information from users in a spreadsheet. So you can see, just right now, I filled out the form, put Schrader Molly, my favorite subject was social studies, here was my best professional development, which school I worked at, and how did I feel about the school year. So I will get all the information. Now if I wanted to share this information with somebody else, right now I'm the only person that sees this. But up in the right hand corner we do have that share button in which I could say I want other people in my department like Nathaniel to be able to see this document. I would give him either edit or view rights depending on what he would want and then I could click share and save. I could also add a little email message saying take a look at the survey data. Thanks. Okay and then I could share and save that with him and then he would get that. I'm not going to do that because he wouldn't want to see that right now. Okay, so you can share the information with anybody. Now once you're here at the survey results page, once you have some data collected, you're going to want to pay attention to this button form. Okay, this button form allows you to go back to your editing, go to the live form, and also show a summary of responses. Now it's not going to be very interesting with the data I have here, but based on the types of questions that I ask, okay, such as multiple choice questions or choose from a list, it will start building a survey graph, a graph of the survey results for me to see the different ways that people have answered. So of course there's only one person that's answered this, question, this survey, so it's not that interesting. But if you have any sort of text boxes, then it won't start gathering things into graphs. Okay? And to get out of this, I just can click on the X and it goes back to the spreadsheet. So again, let me review the three, the three parts to this Google form. In your Google Docs now, you have, this is the way that you access your form, okay, now that it's created. So there is the spreadsheet version, which collects all the information. From the form button, I can get back into the edit mode. And from the edit mode, 
I can rearrange questions, I can add questions, I can do anything. I can click on a, a question and use the pencil to edit and say I made a mistake or something like that, then I could um, put anything that I wanted to in here. If I rearrange the questions on this part right here, it will not rearrange it will not rearrange the questions on the spreadsheet. So that's why I said it's very important that you get the order of the questions in the best order that you can think of before you view the spreadsheet because even though I would change them on here, it wouldn't necessarily change. So for example, if I was going to say, oh, I forgot to add an email. I wanted to collect their email. So I could go into add item and add a text question and I would say, please share your email and a text box is just fine with that and click done. So now that's the last question. I can bring it up and put it into the place that I would want for the people to see it. Make sure I would click save. Okay. But as you can see on my spreadsheet, it's just going to be at the end. It's not going to be at a place that's in the same order as um, on the live form. Okay. But if I did change it to add that email, once I clicked on the live link, you'll see that it says last name, first name, email. So again, we've got the spreadsheet. We can go to form, edit form to get into the editing version where we can add and change things. And then if we click on the link below, we go to the live form. So there are three different versions, the spreadsheet, the edit form, and the live form. If I wanted to send this form out to people, and to fill it out, so I'm ready to do that. I would want to make sure that I'm in the spreadsheet and go to Form, Edit Form. Because we want to grab the link, we want to highlight the link that does not have at apps.edina in it and copy it. So I can click Control C for copy or right click and copy. The next thing that I would do is I would open an email. And if I opened an email, I could write who this is to. I could do elementary teachers, media, and principals. And I would say end of the year form. And I could say, please take two minutes to fill out this form. Now, I have that link copied so I can right click. And all I do is just paste. And now that form the teachers can access it. And since it doesn't have it apps.edina, I could send it to anybody, even if they didn't have a Google account within edina apps. And then I could send it to them, and they would be able to fill that out. So using Google Forms to collect information is very useful. And once you have created the new Google Form, you have the edit mode, you have the spreadsheet mode, and you also have the live mode. Let us know if there's any way that we can help you to put Google Forms into practice into your position. Thanks.